Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. This week, I have something new for you. I'm going to start a new series where I examine different paintings from other professional artists and look at what makes them successful and talk about ways you could implement some of their techniques in your own work. I'm going to try to focus on a specific theme for each video, and this week's theme is light. This first piece that you see here is by Philip A. Ehrlich, and it's called Winter Sketching. And I chose this piece because the light is particularly effective in leading the viewer's eye through the composition, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So as you can see here, we have a limited color palette, a lot of cool colors that dominate the scene, but there is a lot of warmth and light in the center of the scene. When I first looked at this piece, I did not notice the goat. My eyes were immediately drawn to the white highlights in the center of the trees. What's fascinating about the way that the light works in this piece is that it leads your eye towards a surprise in the painting. When I first looked at it, I noticed the patch of light, obviously. My eyes were drawn to that contrast right away, but there's nothing really there to look at initially. When you look at the light, it's just a patch of snow in the middle of the trees. It's pretty, but there's nothing remarkable, remarkable about that. But if you follow the line of light, you're led to a surprise. And there you see this little mountain goat who kind of blends into the surroundings as mountain goats do. And it creates that sense of surprise that you would have if you were out on a hike in the mountains yourself and suddenly noticed a mountain goat. I love this piece because of that, because it creates an experience, not just giving you a picture of what it looks like in the winter time, but it allows you to have that kind of a, a feeling of discovery, of surprise, where you know you encounter something that you didn't expect to, and it just makes your hike that much more memorable and interesting. So while at first it may look like the light is misplaced in this painting. It's very intentionally placed. So what we learn from this piece is that you can use light in at least two different ways. There's many ways you can, but we learn two from this particular piece. The first one is that you can use light to get the reader to look in one particular place right off the bat. When they first see your piece, think about what you want them to look at first. Use the light to emphasize that part. But you can also use light to lead your viewer through the painting. Using light as a guide just takes things up a notch, takes your composition up to something more interesting. When people look at your pieces, you don't want them to look at it and then immediately, immediately look away. Your goal in painting a piece is not to just get the viewer to look at your piece and then move on, but you want them to engage with it and interact with it. And so this piece exemplifies how light can do that. It leads the viewer through the piece and creates an experience. It engages them. They have to look at it for longer than just a moment to, you know, get the full benefit of what's in this piece. And the light, the light automatically makes the brain do that without even thinking about it. Imagine the scene without the light. Imagine it was just all pretty evenly lit and you have the little mountain goat there and it's a cute scene, but it's not nearly as engaging to your mind and not nearly as satisfying of an experience to look at it. So I encourage you, and I'm going to do this myself, think about ways of using light to keep the viewer looking at your painting, keep them engaged with it for longer than just a second or two. This next piece, titled Soft Light Sky by Michelle Tholen, is pretty remarkable, even though it's very simple. You really don't have any distinct forms. What you are probably looking at, at least the way I'm interpreting it, is that you have some kind of body of water. It looks like dawn light to me. It's very soft, very diffused, not quite as vibrant as a sunset would be. Um, it's very misty. You have what looks like foliage or hills in the distance that lead you towards the center point of the sunrise. What I think makes this use of light particularly effective is that even though there aren't any distinct figures in this piece, the subject is the light itself. So obviously your eye is drawn to it immediately when you see it. But this kind of light in this particular piece creates a very strong emotion. It evokes a sense of peace, calm, that soft diffusion of light that radiates from the center, from the sun point throughout the rest of the piece, just casts a warm glow over the entire painting. What I love about this is that it tells me that even if I make a very simple painting where I have very basic shapes, maybe on a particular day I'm not feeling up for a very complex piece, or maybe I'm pressed for time and don't have as much energy to invest in making a very distinct subject for my piece, I can make the light itself the subject of my piece. And I can use it to represent 
and evoke a particular emotion instead of telling a story with figures. And that's what this light does. It tells a story. It tells a story of that first light of dawn, of morning, as it's diffusing throughout the rest of the sky and over the landscape. And it's very attractive. I could look at this piece for a very long time, even though there's nothing particularly, I hesitate to use the word interesting because I do find it interesting, but you know what I mean. There's nothing complex or detailed to look at. I'm just enjoying the light as if I were enjoying a sunrise. Side note to this piece, even though it was painted in acrylic, I think I could create something very similar to this with granulating watercolors, which would be really fun to play with. I love taking my granulating colors and just playing with them and seeing what they can do and looking at their separating effects and just getting that beautiful texture. This kind of a piece is going to give me an excuse to try to create something like this with granulating colors and really capitalize on that effect and try to create some light. Um, obviously, if you were going to do something like this, I think I think me personally, I would choose a non-granulating color for the sky portion simply because it creates having that smoothness and that very pale, soft wash is going to create that diffused light feeling and look. If you have granulation in the sky, it's not going to give you that softness. Yeah, my, my wheels are turning and I want to go paint something like this um, today. So this would also be a good exercise if you're having some creative block, just playing with light, not worrying about anything else, just figuring out how you can paint light, how you can paint skies. And it would be a good a good warm-up exercise, I think. Yeah, I've talked myself into it. I'm going to do something like this, I think in my sketchbook first, and then maybe try to make a bigger piece. So I recently discovered a new YouTube channel, um, Oliver Pyle. He's got a wonderful watercolor channel. I think what makes him stand out from the others is that he's doing something that very few are doing. He's making very long form content and really going into detail about the basics of watercolor, but also throwing in some more intermediate, I would say even advanced concepts. If you feel like you are outgrowing some of the more um, beginner friendly channels, then Oliver Pyle would be a good place to go next. He covers the basics really, really well. He has a really strong grasp of color and his landscapes are just enchanting. He lives in the UK and I love his use of color and light. So in this piece, it looks like sunrise. I think that's what the title A New Day is meant to convey. It's sunrise over the castle and you can see the glow as the sun is coming up towards the right side of the page. It's casting some warmth into the new sky and chasing away some of the blue and the cool colors of the last few bits of the night sky. So let's break down this particular piece and see what makes it so strong and so striking and a great example of how to use light and watercolor. One of the most basic skills that you can get into your toolbox is learning how to compose your piece with your light source in mind. So as the name of the piece suggests, it's a new day, it's sunrise, and so the sun's coming up towards the right side of the composition, and it's chasing away the darkness and the purple of the night sky towards the left of the painting. Okay, so since we have our light source on the right-hand side, everything in the piece that's facing towards the light source, it's not just lighter in value, but it's also a different hue. It's a warmer hue, warmer tone, because it's reflecting that warm glow of the sunrise. It's reflecting the light. So everything's kind of got a golden, warm, honey-colored cast over it, right? So that makes it even more effective as a piece, because yeah, he could have simply just painted the castle all one color and made it lighter on one side and darker on the other side that would work. That would be an effective way of communicating where your light source is. But by also utilizing color temperature and hue, he takes it up a notch. So when you're thinking about implementing these ideas or this technique in your own work, first think about where your light source is and what direction the light is going to be moving in the piece. And then not only think about making those sides of the piece, those um, elements that should be highlighted by the sun because they're facing it, don't just think about making them lighter in value, but think about what way you can use color to tell the viewer that, oh, this is catching the sunlight. I love the castle. I'm, I have a weakness for castles, dragons, and any kind of fairy tale, middle ages kind of scene. But if you look at the castle here, he's used color very well to create that sense of the 
sunrise bathing the castle in that morning light. The sides that are directly facing the sun are, you know, a warm yellow, orangey tone. And then you've got this immediate stark contrast between that and the sides that are facing away from the sun. But it's not just that he's created the contrast, he's kind of got a gradient going on too. So yes, it's cooler and more purple, but there is still some orange in those sides that are just adjacent to the sides that are in the sun. And it starts to fade off. And as you get towards the back of the castle, it gets much more purple and blue and cooler colored. And he follows this plan with all of the ruins. He does it with the hillsides and it just creates the sense of the whole scene being bathed in the morning light. And as morning is overtaking night, you see it happening in the landscape. So it makes it very effective, makes it very cohesive, and it tells a story. So in thinking about how we can apply this to our own work and the ways that I've been thinking about applying this to you know my future pieces, um, have you ever painted something that you thought was going to turn out really well? It was well executed. Your paint, you know, colors worked well together. Your composition was on point and your you know, subject was well rendered. Everything was proportional. All those other pieces were, you know, in place. And you're thinking, okay, this should be a really good painting, but why am I not liking this piece? Why am I not really drawn to it? Why am I dissatisfied with it? Perhaps it's because you didn't use light in a way that really created character for the piece. And I know that that's been a weakness of mine in some of my pieces and something that I've been trying to remedy in the past couple of months. And in, in particular, when I look back at some of my old work, it's good, it's decent, but there's a lack of emotion and a lack of character because there's a lack of light. There's, you know, contrast in the piece. There are light and dark shades and there's mid-tones and all of that. But there's no light source. There's no clear sense of what time of day it is, what kind of mood is, you know, being set for this landscape. And it falls a little flat. This piece by Oliver Pyle does not fall flat by any means. It's very warm. It's inviting. It's very clear what time of day it is. And it creates a sense of story. That first light of day is starting to come and bathe the landscape and you're instantly caught up in that serenity and that peace of it. And you can imagine yourself walking here. You can imagine a day here and maybe a day spent exploring or having a picnic, something like that. Anyway, light can really make the difference between a mediocre, okay piece and a piece that just leaves an impression on the viewer and makes them want to have it in their own home because you've created a story, you've created a feeling that they want to remember, they want to see it every time they look at that painting, they want to relive that moment or relive that story or get that emotion that you get from the piece. So to recap, we've talked about ways that light can affect a piece and bring life to a piece in a few different ways. First, light can be used to not only draw your reader to a specific point in your painting, but it can also lead them through the painting and keep them engaged with it to keep them looking at it and exploring the piece. Two, light itself can be the main character in a particular painting. You don't have to have a painting that's full of figures and full of distinct shapes to create something that is striking or to create a character or a subject. The light itself can be the subject and you can do that in ways that create an emotion or a feeling or capture a moment in time. And finally, light can be used to take an okay painting and elevate it to something that is a truly striking work of art. It can tell a story and draw the reader in in such a way that they want to keep returning to this piece over and over again because it tells a story or evokes some kind of you know memory or time of day that they want to remember or enjoy over and over again. So I hope that was helpful and I really enjoyed doing this. I think it's a valuable skill and I'm going to try to make a series of these videos, maybe one per month, and each, each time we'll focus on a different aspect of a painting. I thought I'd start with light because it's something that I've really been drawn to lately and I'm really trying to study more and grow in that area. So I hope this was helpful to you as well. Thank you so much for watching and wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely day. I will see you next time. Bye.